What's the matter, Inwa? Dagoth Ur whispering sweet nothings into your ear again. Come, Nerevar, mod your game and come to Red Mountain, Nerevar. Look at my peak physical form in 4K, Nerevar. Hello, I'm Professor Boondoggle, and today I'm going to show you how to install Morrowind using Mod Organizer and OpenMW. So, first things first is you're going to want to purchase the game. I prefer GOG because it is offline and I don't have to worry about Steam updating or Bethesda releasing a Creation Club update for it. So, I'm just going to download it straight from GOG. When the download finishes, install Morrowind. Make sure it's clean. You don't want any leftover mods. And then you're going to need to go to the Mod Organizer 2 page. It'll say Skyrim at the top, but you can use this just as well for Morrowind. You're going to need to download the C++ plugin right here and the Net Framework if you haven't already. You probably should if, if you've been using a computer for any amount of time, but they are on this page. I will link this all in the description below. And then once those two are installed, you're going to want to click on this main file here, download it. You are going to need a Nexus account but it can be free. You don't have to have a premium account like I do. So you hit download. Mod Organizer will start downloading. You open it up, you run it. When you launch Mod Organizer, you might get a screen like this where it's going to want you to create an instance. This is a virtual, basically replica of your Morrowind installation. You're just gonna go through. You're gonna create a global instance. You're gonna choose your game, Morrowind in this case, obviously. You can name it whatever you like. Hit next, hit next. And then it will give you the option to choose where your mods are actually installed. So mod, right now, Mod Organizer can be installed on your C drive, but mods are big. And if you have the extra space, I like to put it on a separate drive. So, for example, I will put it on my E drive. And this is where all of my mods will be saved to for Merlin. So, Or you can just leave it on default. It's perfectly fine. It'll just go onto your C. Hit Next. Hit Launch. It'll finish the instance. And you should have a fresh installation of Mod Organizer for Morrowind. So it'll probably ask you to set default categories. I don't really use them, but you can if you want. We're going to say no. So at this point, you should pretty much just have this screen. You don't need to worry about these plugins I have. These are for my own Morrowind game. Obviously, ours are not the same. We're not worrying about them right now. But this is all you, all you need right now. You have a Morrowind installation and you have a mod organizer installation. So what I like to do with my mod organizer is down here, I like to pin this to the taskbar so I can, every time I close out of it, I can push the button, brings it right back up. So you're gonna wanna come to the OpenMW website now. And if you want the latest version that allows you to use a lot of more script based mods like I do, you're going to want to go to development builds right here. And I will put the link in the description as well you're just going to click that. It will automatically start downloading. It is a zip file, so you will need something to extract it like WinRAR. So when OpenMW finishes downloading, you're going to want to click on it, open it up. It'll show you tons of files that you don't really need to know, but whether you're using 7-zip or WinRAR, all you need to do now is go to wherever you want to put OpenMW. I like to put it next to my Morrowind installation, just so it's easy to remember but I will create one right here. Name it whatever you want, OpenMW, there you go. And now you're going to right click on the address bar here, hit copy address as text, go back to your unzipper, WinRAR, whatever, hit extract, and then paste it into the destination path. It'll take a couple seconds, it'll extract everything you need, and there you go, OpenMW is now installed. You can launch it if you want, it does not hurt, so here is mine. Obviously, I have a bunch of mods running, so it's kind of yours isn't going to have this many. So now what you want to do is open up Mod Organizer once again. Here is your regular Morrowind installation with Mod Organizer. Sometimes it can be good to launch Morrowind through here as well. Just launch the game up. Hit really low resolution, but there you go. It'll, it'll generate the INIs that you might need for OpenMW, but just close out of it. We you know we don't need to go into the game or anything. So now that OpenMW is extracted, you're going to want to click this drop down menu, hit edit, add, add from file, and then you're going to need to find wherever you installed OpenMW. For me, it's just on E drive right here. So you're going to double click that, and you're going to find the OpenMW launcher.exe right here. Hit open, hit apply, hit OK. And now when you click on the drop down menu, 
this OpenMW launcher will show up. You're just going to hit run. And there it is. It is now launching OpenMW through Mod Organizer, which will allow you to have the benefit of both worlds, right? For me, I have a bunch of extra ESPs because it is reading from my Morrowind directory. That's not a fresh installation. Yours will just have these three right here. So there is one more thing you have to do, and this is what makes OpenMW modding with Mod Organizer a little bit trickier than normal, is you're going to have to download a plugin. So I'll put the link for this in the description below as well. But basically what this does is it allows you to extract your mod list into OpenMW every time you change your mods or do something that'll affect your mod list, basically. It, I know it sounds complicated. It's really, really not. So you're going to come to this page. You're going to download it like we did before. Just do a manual download. So once it downloads, you open it up, open MW player. Just don't go into the folder. Just take it as it is. You're going to need to find your mod organizer folder wherever you put it. Hopefully you know that. Mine's right here. And you're going to go to the plugins folder right here. And you're going to grab open MW player and drag and drop it into your mod organizer folder. Obviously it says replace for me because I have it installed already. Yours will just drop right in. And there you go. It's installed. Close out of mod organizer, open it back up. And when you do, next time you click on these tools right here, the puzzle pieces, you will have a new drop down menu called open MW player. And now all you have to do is hit export. And when you do that, it'll export your mod list to open MW. Little complicated, but I promise you it's easy and it's worth doing. If my instructions aren't very good, there are instructions on the OpenMW player page that'll explain it probably more clear than I ever could, but this is supposed to be quick. So, okay, so you have OpenMW installed, you have Mod Organizer installed, everything looks good. You wanna start adding some mods. I will start with the most classic of mods for Morrowind nowadays, Tamriel Rebuilt. This is a great mod. It adds a lot of the mainland to the game. It is amazing. The quests are amazing. Hopefully you've heard of it before. If you haven't, get lost in how great it is. So you're going to want to come here, go to the download page. I will put a link for this below. Hit main release, hit main mirror or more when you can get it off the Nexus. We can just get it off the Nexus so it's easy. Go to files. So I think this is a good time to show off how to log in on Mod Organizer. This will be very helpful. So you click the tool icon on the top here, go to Nexus, and then log in to your account. Doesn't matter if it's premium, just log in. And that's what will allow you to click this magical button that will save you so much time. Hit Mod Manager Download. Hit Download, doesn't matter. Same with the music, download. It'll slide right in. And so it'll start going instantly to your download tab here. The other thing you need for Tamriel Rebuilt is you need the Tamriel Rebuilt data file. This is what makes the magic happen. It is a hard requirement. You need it. Same thing. If your Nexus is linked up, it'll be really easy. You just click this. I prefer HD. So you click that, hit download. It'll download straight to your mod organizer. So once the download has finished, you're going to install all three of them. It'll ask you about categories. Just you don't need them unless you really want them. You can leave it as it is. You just hit OK. You don't need to do anything fancy with this mod. It'll install. It might take a while. It is a pretty big file, about two gigs. And we're going to do the same thing for the main Tamriel rebuilt mod. So when you launch this, it'll show three different options. All you really need are the core installation and the Siege at Fire Moth compatibility patch if you're running that add-on from Bethesda, which you should be. It just kind of depends. Install both of them. Install music. And now when you install the music one, you can either rename it and add music. So you remember this is the music file for the game, or you can have it install with the file we just installed, Tamriel Rebuilt, or it'll tell you, hey, this mod's already installed. What would you like to do? So these are technically two different parts of a mod. So you just want to hit merge. You don't want to hit replace because that will get rid of Tamriel Rebuilt. You just want to hit merge. And now those will sort of go into one super big file. Now, what you need to do next is you need to click both of them in Mod Organizer, and that turns them on digitally, virtually, basically. So right now, if you launch the game, if you went to T Tamriel Rebuilt content, it would be 
messed up, files would be missing, there would be lots of bright yellow triangles, it means you're missing textures and meshes. So even though we've installed the Terminal Data sort of repository, it's not enabled. The archives are not enabled for it. And if you actually click on the archive tab in Mod Organizer, you can see that they are not checked. So what do we do about that? It's very, very easy with OpenMW. So once again, you're going to launch the OpenMW launcher right here. So don't worry about these right now. Go to archive files and you're going to click on these and basically enable them. OK, looks good. And now you're going to exit out of the launcher. Don't launch the game. Go to the puzzle pieces again. Click open MW player and hit export. And so that'll export your mod list into open MW. So when you launch it, it'll set it all up. There you go. My game at this point has, is working perfectly fine in open MW. We have the Tamriel rebuilt mod installed and it will function perfectly. We're on the latest version, so we can use different script mods and it's all good to go. If there is interest in additional series after this, I might make more videos going through the different mods I actually use for my own game. I have a mod list. If you know what you're doing, it's easy to follow. But at this point, you should be able to install whatever mods you want. So if you wanted to add the Skyrim Home of the Nords mod, which I recommend you do as well because it is a great mod, it's made by the same people or the same group of individuals who've created the mainland continent of Morrowind. You can download this as well. And like I said, all you have to do is click Mod Manager Download, hit Download, double click. If you want grass, you can. You can have grass. I don't really care for it. Hit OK. It's installed. You click it here and then you export. Now you launch the launcher and it's all good to go. So let's say you install a mod and the game is crashing. The beauty of Mod Organizer is let's say this Skyrim mod we just installed that adds parts of Skyrim to Morrowind crashes my game now that I've installed it. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's the mod. Probably won't be this mod because it's made really well. But for example, all you have to do is click that button, export, launch OpenMW again. It is no longer there. It is not affecting any vanilla files, data, anything that would cause issues. You launch the game, it'll work. That is a good way to troubleshoot mod issues. And you can only do this with OpenMW. I think Nexus's Vortex has a virtual system, but this is just what I prefer to use because it's it's what I taught myself to use, and it's very, very, very easy. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, leave comments below. I will answer them. If there is enough interest, I would be happy to make more videos like this, sort of showing how to install different mods. Thanks for watching, and peace out.